in this video, Colton and I have a discussion about materials and techniques for oil painting. And this was part of a um, discussion that we had in the What's Wrong With My Painting show. And it really wasn't part, of, uh, didn't really fit with that. So I, but it was, I thought it was pretty good and that you guys might enjoy listening to it. So without further ado, ado here's Colton and I having a discussion about materials and techniques for oil painting. So when I started painting at the studio doing the murals, so we have a rule that you're not allowed to paint unless you're wearing uh, gloves. Mm -hmm. So um, I was just kind of curious your thoughts on that, I guess. It's, well, it depends on what you're materials not, you're using. Yeah. You know, if you're using uh, the Geneva paint, then it's, you, don't, you don't need gloves at all. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I don't ever use gloves. But if I was going to be working with, um, you know, uh, liquid or you know, depending yeah. on different materials, you know, that have solvents in them, then I would probably, you know, yeah. it's like, th th those are hard yeah. things for me to give advice on because um, I don't, it, you know, it, 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 I could say, yeah, don't, it's not necessary to wear gloves, but then somebody could use like, you know, Griffin uh, paint by Winsor Newton, which has got all the warnings all over the back and you don't want to get that on your skin. Yeah. So it really depends on what you're using, you know. Yeah. Um, I know at the studio we use a lot of flake white. And yeah. So that's lead based. Well, paint, that's probably so why that's they're why they're giving you, you know, and and yeah. uh, lead is something that like, you know, it's not absorbed through the skin. You know, I used to use it the first mm -hmm. 3 years that I painted, I used it. But I actually prefer um, they you know, if they're using lead white from from a conservationist point of view, that's the very best. Mm -hmm. It forms the strongest paint films, and so for the murals yeah. in these churches, I imagine that's real important to them. Yeah. Uh, so, um, but now with all the you know regulations and stuff and lead, and there's a lot of you know issues with shipping it around and all kinds of stuff. So mm -hmm. artists have started to use titanium, and I started using it years ago just because I didn't want to have to worry about washing my hands every time I. You know, you don't want to get it yeah. on your hands and then eat a tuna fish sandwich, you know, yeah, uh, and things yeah. like that. So you have to be careful. Um, but I think that uh, in terms of um, uh, lead versus titanium, I much prefer titanium. Mm -hmm. It's much more opaque. And um, and by the way, uh, as far as um, the differences between titanium and, and lead, I'll tell you, there, there's I, what I hear a lot of. People that really like lead white, the first time they use titanium, it's so overpowering because it's a much mm -hmm. uh, stronger pigment. It has a better coverage and everything else. And so it's shocking. And so it almost seems like, like if you wanted to mix a really wonderful flesh tone, if you take lead and throw some color into it, it's much more, lead white is much more transparent than titanium. So you get these nice uh, colors coming through and it seems more pleasant. But the only difference between the lead and the titanium is when you go and you grab the titanium, grab half as much. And it, yeah. it you know, in other words, if, you got, if, if you're saying, well, my colors are too milky and they're too white because this titanium's, you know, overpowering, mm -hmm. well, you use too much. You use half as much. You know, mm -hmm. it's no problem. You can mix the darkest, richest, you know, one step from black colors with titanium, but you just use very 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 little of it yeah so interesting it's a little more it's you know it's like a power white almost you know mm -hmm. so you just have to be careful um, let's say do you have any other questions yeah um, uh, this is more just kind of a comment so something that so when I was in high school I used to paint with liquid a lot mm -hmm. um, now using the Geneva oils I don't need to to make it thin you know so that it right um, something kind of interesting with doing these murals um, so for one of the temples they did murals for they had another artist do it and um, they were uh, the artists that I paint with were explaining to me that when the other artist was installing his murals that he you know he used liquid he already had paint flecking off because when they take the murals down they have to roll them up to ship them mm -hmm. and liquid just makes an extremely brittle paint film See that that's a I would hate to I, I can't even comment on that because yeah. very, very likely it's not it wasn't the liquid, it was some other working method that he was using. Like there's so that's many possible. variables. Like it's the paint, the pigment, True. the additives, there's there's you know, there's so many variables that go into it. A lot of times people 
um, will use. I mean, you can use turpentine wrong. You know, you can mm -hmm. just you know do it all. So, I think that um, uh, I would have to go and examine like the whole working method. But if it's flaking off, you yeah. know, there's like that sounds like bondage issue. Uh, you know, I wouldn't blame it on the liquid. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, the thing that I don't like about liquid is that it's really smelly. Mm -hmm. Like you know, and, and it needs True, you need because it's petroleum need, based. You know. It's it was not. It's not even right. that it's petroleum based. It's a type of petroleum that it is. Gotcha. You know, for instance, uh, you know, Gamsol, uh, which is a uh, mineral spirits, is, is a lot safer than liquid in terms of just you know, uh, the fumes. The fumes, yeah, yeah and everything. So, um, the the uh, you know the mineral spirits that we use in our foundation stain. Is, is very it's a medical grade it's like super low fumes and when you mm -hmm. and the toxicity of that is like real low compared to something like liquid or griffin uh, oil paints mm -hmm. you know and it's so you just got to know what you're dealing with you know like if you're going to use there's nothing wrong with using liquid or griffin if you use them properly mm -hmm. um, but you need to have good ventilation for sure um, another question um, about the clove oil mm -hmm. um, so some of the artists that I paint with have also been really concerned that clove oil, at least in their mind, is kind of on the edge between an oil that dries and an oil that doesn't. And so they've cautioned me. They said, be careful if you're painting with clove oil. Make sure that it does dry and cure fully. Um, they've had experiences in the past where some oil paint manufacturers had put oils in their paints that, you know, a non-curing oil. And yeah, so that's, that's all none of that is uh, accurate and so let me tell you why that's not accurate number one is oil of cloves is not an oil okay. it's an essential oil which is not technically an oil it doesn't it's not like a gotcha. fat right it's not like linseed oil or something mm -hmm. number two is it evaporates completely from the paint film mm -hmm. so technically it's like uh, it's uh, essential oils are act just like solvents you know like a scientist would even call it a solvent in a way because you know water is a solvent it evaporates it out gotcha. so if you take a drop of clove oil and you put it on a piece of glass and you come back a month later it's gone if you if you mix it into your paint and you come in you know back six months later or even a month later and you can take it to a chemist and examine it, there's no clove oil in it. So it's essentially evaporated out, just like mineral spirits will, just like turpentine will. Mm -hmm. And so, and if it's pure clove oil, there's no residual. So there's nothing in it whatsoever that would cause gotcha. anything like that. that there's, a, there's a lot of uh, misinformation about a lot of, you know, people have talked about clove oil causing paint to turn dark. Mm -hmm. No, you know, it's, it's just not even, you know, it, it evaporates from the paint film. So. You know, to say that it'll turn your paintings dark 30 years from now is just—it's not in the paint after two weeks, you know, gotcha. or after a month. So, um, and and I've also heard people s suggesting, you know, in Ralph Mayer's book, uh, Material Artist's Guide to Materials and Techniques, which is really the artist bible and the real standard, mm -hmm. he recommends clove oil as a drying retardant. You know, so it's something that's been around for a long time. It's been used by artists for over 100 years. Mm -hmm. So um, I've been using it in, in my own, every portrait I painted from 1987 on has been just lots of clove oil. <laughs> but there's no more clove oil. It's, yeah. it's essentially evaporated out. Yeah. Um, so another question, I know on your material list um, you have kind of the recipes for taking um, like the Windsor Newton paints and creating your own slow dry mediums yeah. uh -huh. for them. I'm curious now that um, you've done you know, kind of ramped up, you've figured out how to, you know, double your pigment load and mm -hmm. right. do all that. If now you're going to go back and kind of modify those, or if that's still fairly close to the recipe that you currently use? Now, that's a good, uh, that, that medium, that uh, slow dry medium that I have the recipe for, you know, it's mm -hmm. on, for anybody that wants to know, it's on the supply list, drawmixpaint.com. You go to the top, supply list, and in the supply list, I recommend the paints and I've talked about the Geneva paint but I say if you're not can't get the Geneva paint yeah click on this and it gives you a recipe for slow dry medium which you can use with any brand of paint and that's why that book um, if you don't have Ralph Mayer's guide to artist materials and techniques get get a copy of that and get like I think it's the I'm not sure but the fifth I know for sure the fourth generation and older are good, but the very newest <laughs> ones, they've taken a lot of the good information out, and I don't like the newest too. versions. But get, you know, uh, version, revision four mm -hmm. of that book, 
and that's a real good guy for you to, especially with what you guys are doing, because he covers like, yeah. um, you know, and I know you guys aren't doing gessos, but he's doing like, you know, big uh, murals and you know everything, all mm -hmm. kinds of challenges that artists face. That book was hugely uh, helpful for me. So, so, um, you know, fat over lean. You know the fat over lean rule. Yeah. You know, one of the things, uh, and I get a lot of questions because people hear fat over lean, fat over lean, and the real uh, issue that's even a bigger issue than fat over lean is painting fast drying colors over slow drying colors. Like, for instance, if you painted this, if you would have painted this white and then painted this dark on top of the white, then this would crack because okay. this white is a much slower drying uh, pigment than burn umber, which is in here. So therefore, those are the kind of things. And you can go look at a, you know, even a lot of old paintings. And whenever you see an artist that's gone in and painted like burn umbery or, or colors that have umbers, which are very fast drying colors, on top of uh, you know other colors that are slow, you get cracking. But you painted this all in wet and wet, right? The whole thing. Uh, pretty much, yeah. Yeah. So you shouldn't have any trouble. That's one of the nice things about painting wet and wet in one layer. Yeah is that as long as your foundation is lean and you know the Geneva paints are very fat in other words they're good they're a top layer paint yeah you know the foundation stain that we sell is a, is a very lean it's a bottom layer paint you know but um, that's uh, you won't you won't have any trouble because uh, the, the very, from a conservationist point of view one layer of paint wet and wet is the very best way to go as opposed to building up multiple layers that's when you get into trouble gotcha. and you gotta really be careful so all right, any other questions? Let's see, so um, in terms of varnishing, so these artists that I've been painting with, you know, strongly, you know, said I should not varnish um, before a year. A lot of people, uh, you know, I don't know, um, varnishing a painting early, if it's an oil-based painting and all your layers are right and you're not doing fat or lean, you don't have any issues with all that, um, you're not going to hurt your painting by varnishing it too early unless you start picking up paint. In other words, your paint needs to be dry enough where it's not going to be picked up by the varnish, which is not, you know, like a couple weeks. But yeah. the problem is, is that then you'll have to re-varnish. So it's not really hurting the paint. It's just, uh, yeah. I'm just telling you, my whole experience and everything I know, it's not going to hurt your painting by gotcha. doing it too early. It's just being, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I could see if you're painting, you might like have to re varnish. It might get yeah. sunken in again. Yeah. See what I mean? But I see kind of what you're, I mean, you mentioned the idea like if you're painting in multiple layers, then it just needs even longer to make yeah. sure that all the oil yes, can yes, evaporate yes. out of all those white yeah, layers. Yeah, yeah. That might be a have part of where that concern's coming from, where if you just paint wet and wet. When you varnish this, I mean, put, it, put the varnish on, you know, like dump it on there. Yeah. Watch my video, you know. Just yeah. pour it on. It'll look it'll look fabulous. Yeah, I've varnished one of my paintings so far, and yeah. it does. 